In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. The words of today's Gospel in the Mass here in Pocatello, Idaho. This is the territory of Father DeSmet, so it's always a joy to come back here. I know you haven't had Mass for like six months. And um, just remember the Indians, it seems to be uh, the trait continuing. They didn't get Mass, some of them, for many years. They didn't see Father DeSmet after 14 years at one point. But uh, the Jesuit priest came and started to build churches around here, and they had steady Mass after a certain time. But the words of our Lord in the Gospel, Watch and pray, he says, Because, always be ready, because the hour, you know not the hour when the Son of Man will come. Of course, that refers to the second coming, when Jesus Christ comes at the end of the world. But also, for all of us, He will come, He will come certainly to be our judge at our death. And at our death, that will be the, the time we come before the, the judgment. We know that there are two judgments from our catechism. The particular judgment and the general judgment. The general judgment will be the end of the world when all the human race will be gathered before our Lord Jesus Christ. This one, everyone will be there. No one will escape. All justice will be made clear. All injustices will be made just and, and fairly rewarded and fairly punished. And the, the general judgment will repeat everyone's particular judgment, but will bring to light the effects that people had. For example, Martin Luther, he died in, in uh, the 1500s. He died, but he's still affecting the world right now with all the Protestant denominations and all the heresies. So he is still <clears throat> this one bad priest who himself is burning in hell, He's still dragging many souls to hell by his heresies. So all that has to be judged at the end of the world. And then look at the good that has been done. Look at the good done by St. Benedict. His Benedictine order is still affecting the world with monks praying. And traditional monks, well, the few left, are still praying. And uh, pouring penances and prayers to heaven that helps save souls. And look at the influence of, of St. Pius X. He was a great pope. He died in 1914 at the outbreak of World War I. <clears throat> he died of a broken heart because he gave the blessing to all the clerics. And all the young men who were studying to be priests and who were studying in the universities of Rome, they all had to go back to their countries and fight each other on the battlefields. The French, the English, the Italians the Germans, etc. It broke his heart. And they didn't. They wanted to stay to study to be priests, but uh, it was the laws of their country that they had to <clears throat> be drafted. So that war broke the heart of St. Pius X. But St. Pius X is still affecting the world right now. <coughs> For those who reject his teaching, their, their modernism is dragging many souls to hell and destroying our Catholic Mass, destroying the Catholic faith and millions of souls. And the very things that St. Pius X condemned as, at the Vatican, at the, uh, uh, in Pascendi and his other encyclicals, those, all those errors and heresies exploded at Vatican II. So they're in the minds of this Pope, Pope Francis, that's poisoned the minds of all these bishops, and most of the Catholic clergy are infected with these diseases of modernist heresy. But St. Pius X is still affecting the world right now. Because by his clear teaching, we know to stay away from the bad modernism and stay with the good teaching of the Catholic Church. We know, thanks to St. Pius X, we stay away from the bad modern Mass of Vatican II and all compromised Masses, even though they're in Latin and might be traditional, they're still 
they're still a danger to the faith because they're, they're done by priests who accept Vatican II and the new Mass and approve it. And that includes now the new Society of Pius X. Because they have, in the general chapter statement, set to fix an agreement with modernist Rome without Rome's conversion. This is very serious. When Archbishop Lefebvre is very clear, no, we don't make any canonical setups until Rome professes the kingship of our Lord Jesus Christ and come back, comes back to the Catholic faith of all tradition. And that's not the case. Far from it right now. And so, the, it's thanks to St. Pius X that we know to stay away from the false sacraments and stay with the true ones of tradition. So he's still saving souls from hell right now, St. Pius X, such a good pope. And then look at Archbishop Lefebvre, he's still affecting the world right now. He's not canonized yet, but it's thanks to him, the priests of Catholic tradition know where to stand, with no compromise with Vatican II, the new Mass, the new religion, the new sacraments, the new canon law, and we stay with Catholic tradition. It's thanks to Archbishop Lefebvre. So, he's, he's already gone through his particular judgment. But that's why there has to be the general judgment. Because all the injustices have to be made clear. And we know that there are many people who are innocent, who are put in jail and put in prison. They are not guilty of what they're accused of, and yet they're falsely accused. And this happens quite frequently. And there's even been cases of Catholic priests in history who have been falsely accused. But because it was, it was what they heard in the sacrament of confession, they could not defend themselves. And those many priests accepted to go to prison till their death, rather than break the seal of confession. So, so the good that people do, and the bad people do, and the injustices, and the oppressions, and the all this has to be made clear at the end of the world. That's why there has to be the day of judgment. Remember St. Teresa of Avila? She was falsely accused of many things. She, was, she suffered a lot, but she was a, a, a spicy Spanish girl. So she had a hot temper. And she loved our Lord very much, but she suffered for Him very much. She was falsely accused of being possessed by the devil, of being a witch, of being disobedient. She was accused of many things. And our Lord loved her and encouraged her and appeared to her many times. Sometimes He would appear to her scourged at the pillar, dripping with blood and crowned with thorns, and move her to tears and inspire her to found the Carmelite convents uh, that were faithful to the primitive rule. And that gave us many saints, such as St. Teresa of the Child Jesus, Blessed Elizabeth of the Holy Trinity, and many Carmelite saints. So, our Lord also appeared to St. Teresa as a little child, as a little boy about, how old is this boy right here? Yeah, about three or four. And she was walking up the steps in the convent. I, I stood on these steps in Avila, and I still have the statue of the child Jesus there. And St. Teresa was walking up, and the child asked her, Who are who are you? And she says, I'm Sister Teresa of Jesus, but who are you? You're not, because no, nobody's allowed to enter a convent. And for a man to enter a cloister is an excommunication. So a, a little boy, a little kid standing in the convent, just, it was something wrong. So she asked, he asked her, who are you? She says, I'm, I'm Sister Teresa of Jesus. And she asked the child, and who are you? And he said, I'm Jesus of Teresa. I'm Jesus of Teresa, he said. <laughs> and then he blessed her and vanished. So he consoled her in the midst of all a lot of her sufferings. But, but uh, the, our Lord, he, 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 she was falsely accused many times and even put in jail. St. John of the Cross, who was trying to help her for the men's section of the Carmelite reform, he was, in, he was in prison for a while, unjustly. So she used to say, 
when she was being falsely accused, she used to say, I believe in the day of judgment. Because all things will be made clear. Everything will be made clear at the day of judgment. So that explains why there is a particular judgment and a general judgment. Now, while we're on the four last things, these are part of the four last things. The particular judgment, our death, the general judgment, heaven, and hell. And heaven is our home. we got to fight to get there. It doesn't land on our lap. For some chosen souls, it does land on, on their lap, such as children who die after baptism. They go straight to heaven. And their funerals are said in white because they've never sinned, a voluntary personal sin. So everybody else who reaches the age of reason, their funerals are said in black vestments. And they need prayers because they could be in purgatory. And heaven is our home. We have to fight there all our life. And the basic means to get there, told to us by all the saints, daily prayer, daily prayer, especially the rosary, morning and night prayers, meal prayers, and throughout the day just to tell God, I love thee, my God, help me love thee more. Sacred heart of Jesus, have mercy on me, a sinner. Sweetheart of Mary, be my salvation. O Mary, conceive without sin, pray for us who have recourse to thee. And all these little prayers that St. Francis de Sale, he encourages us to do these throughout the day, because it's like throwing wood on the fire, kindling wood, just to keep the fire going of the love of God throughout the day. And that's very important. So we need to pray every day. We need to do, we got to obey God's commandments. And that means self-discipline. A Catholic life is a disciplined life. We're not allowed to live like pagans who live like this, just eat, drink, and, and as if there's no God. We're not allowed to live this way. It's a lie. We're made for God, and we must love Him, adore Him, thank Him, and beg His help. And He loves us. And he, He's our Father, He's our brother, He's our friend, He's our food in the Holy Eucharist. What love of God! He, he has done everything to the most extreme excess to move us to love Him to get to heaven. And that's why none of the damned who go to hell can say, Lord, you were not fair with me. You didn't give me enough graces. You didn't give me enough chance. No. He's, he'll be able to say to each soul who stands condemned to go to hell, I outpoured all my love to save your soul. I knocked at your door. I gave you many graces. And you still <coughs> spat on me and crucified me. <clears throat> Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire. So we don't want to hear those awful words. So we must pray. We must keep the commandments. And that means a lot of self-discipline. we got to go against our laziness. Go against our impurity. Go against our selfishness. Go against our egos. Go in pride. Go against our laziness. Go against our tendencies to vice and sin. we got to fight all the time. And our Lord knows it's a tough fight. That's why He gave us the beautiful sacrament of confession to help us and, and heal the wounds of sin and give us the life of grace and increase it. We must pray. We must live a disciplined life of penance and reparation to the Immaculate Heart. And we must go to the sacraments, but the real sacraments and not the phony ones of the new church. And the real sacraments of priests who do not compromise with Vatican II and the new Mass. And we have to stay with that. And then, uh, and then you get Mass here, what, only every several months. So you got to make the best of that when you get it. Like the Indians used to do in this area with Father Desmet and the Jesuits. And then we must do works of charity. We have to do works of charity to get to heaven. And remember, it's better to be excess in charity. Do much charity for love of God, for the souls in purgatory who need our help and they can't help themselves. And the, the duties of charity towards those we live with which means forgive one another, pray for one another, help one another, 
If you knock horns like brothers and sisters, or brothers and brothers can often do, you forgive each other. You forgive each other. And, and then uh, works of charity towards our neighbor, for those in need, physically, who need food, give them something to eat. Drink, give them something to drink. Bury the dead with shovels and dirt. Help bury the dead. Uh, when people are too poor to afford a funeral, help help them in some way. What else? The works of charity, the spiritual works of charity that people forget about, which is correcting the sinner. To correct the sinner is a work of charity. Now, we don't need to correct, like, like I'm better than you and you better stop doing that because we're all poor sinners. So we got to correct our neighbor in a brotherly way. And say, look, I know I'm a poor sinner, but I'm a, I want to encourage you to live virtuous. You can't live a divorced and remarried life. This offends God. Well, who are you to tell me what to live? Well, listen, I'm not telling you. I just want to help save your soul. Because if we don't keep God's commandment, we will go to hell. That's the true correction of our neighbor. Counseling the doubtful, especially in this crisis of the church. Help each help these confused souls, especially confused Catholics, to find tradition. These are confusing days, indeed, with a bad Pope that we have, who's, who's a real modernist. But, but nevertheless, God, God wants to save souls, and He'll send many your way, asking you, well, why are you Catholic? Why do you wear a dress? Why do you wear a scapula? Why do you have so many children? And tell them the joy and the hope that is in you, says St. Peter. Tell them why. And you'll see, many souls appreciate to hear the truth. They may not grab it right away, but it might sink in. And if you pray for them, they might convert down the road a few months or years. Or on their deathbed. So, the charity of correcting and of admonishing the sinner. Also, the charity of consoling those who are sorrowful. That's pretty obvious. But it is a work of mercy. To console those who are who have suffered sorrow or trauma. And to pray for the living and the dead. And visit the sick. Visit the imprisoned. These are works of mercy. So, so those four last things. Heaven, well, death, particular judgment, general judgment. Heaven we must fight for and pray for. And then hell, hell to avoid. Hell to avoid. And we need to remind, be reminded of the fires of hell. We need to think of these often. Because we don't want to go there. We don't want to go to hell. The, whole, the book of Isaiah, the Holy Ghost says, Who of you could endure everlasting torments? Listen to some of these words of some of the great saints. Listen to this. St. Bernard of Clairvaux. I am filled with fear and trembling, and all my bones are shaken at the thought of that unhappy country, that unhappy territory of the damned. St. Catherine of Siena, she, she said these words, I saw the torments of hell and those of purgatory, no words can describe them. Had poor people the faintest idea of them, they would suffer a thousand deaths rather than undergo the least of the torments of hell during a single day. St. Alphonsus Maria de Liguori, what does he say about hell? Listen to this. Poor Judas, he says. Poor Judas. Above now 1,700 years, so now it's 2,018 years, <laughs> have elapsed since Judas has been in hell, and his hell is still only beginning. St. Anthony Mary Claret. The natural fire that we see during this life on earth has great power to burn and torment. When you go home, light a match, put your finger on the match, 
and, and hold your finger in the fire or above it as long as you can. That'll give you a little idea, give us a little idea of hell. So he says, St. Anthony Mary Claret, that fire on earth can burn and torment. Yet, he says, this is not even a shadow of the fires of hell. St. Cyprian of Carthage, he said, The wicked bodies of the condemned in hell shall simmer and blaze in those living fires. Because the fires do not end. Yeah. There is no time in hell to say, Okay, let's get a Coca-Cola break. Let's have a fresh water, cold water break for five minutes. Shut the fires of hell off. Let's get a refreshment, a cold <laughs> shower, and then get back to burning. It doesn't work that way. There is no refreshment. There is no stop to the agony and the suffering. And what's even worse in hell, as the saints say, you cannot love. You cannot love your mom, your dad. You hate everybody. You cannot love your friends. You cannot love God. They are forced to hate God. So deep is this hatred that if the Sacred Heart of our Lord went down into hell and told the damned and the devils in hell, who are billions and billions, I offer you heaven, I offer you my forgiveness. That he would, this would not happen because they've already made their choice. But let's say our Lord did. Their hatred is so great of God and of all other people that all of them would attack our Lord and try to kill Him and spit on Him and try to tear Him to pieces. They would refuse. All the damned, all the souls, all the devils. That's how horrible the hatred in hell is. Now some are afraid, even, even grown up tough guys, are afraid to walk down some city lanes at a dark night in a rough part of town. But hell is a rough part of town everywhere. Everyone full of hate of God and violence and all vice is in hell. And you and I are in danger on this earth of going there every second. One mortal sin is enough to throw us to hell. That's why if, you, if a soul slips and falls, in mortal sin, by weakness, by stupidity, by whatever, blindness of passion, forgetfulness, immediately run to the Sacred Heart of Jesus in spirit, tell Him you're sorry, beg His forgiveness, make a perfect act of contrition. This is so important, because our Lord, He loves so much that He will forgive a repentant sinner. He will not shut the door of His mercy to a sinner who is truly contrite and sorrowful for their sins. <clears throat> Listen to St. Ephraim of Syria. Alas, of what kind is that place of wailing and of gnashing of teeth? At what, at which even Satan shudders with fear? Oh, woe, what kind of place is it where the unsleeping worm dies not. What dread misery to be sent into outer darkness. Of what kind of angels placed over these torments, who pitiless and frightful punish by casting it in there, while at the same time the reproach most grievously. So he's talking about the, the tortures of the, of the devils on the souls. Then shall those already in the midst of the torments cry out with pleading voices, and there will be no one to speak for them to the Lord, and they will not be heard. Now's the time to fight. Now's the time to pray, because our Lord bends His ear from heaven to hear us. He almost wants to force us, if He could, into heaven, but He, he can't because He respects our free will. Just like if you get married, you don't want to force your husband or wife to marry you. All right, here's the handcuffs. Let's get married now. But I don't want to get married. Well, you're going to get married. That's not love. That's not love. So God, He really wants us 
As he loved us, he expects us to love him in return. And so we must love him now. Now's the chance. Now's the time. This life on earth is very short. This is the time. This is the hour. Don't delay our conversion. Do not delay our conversion. If today you hear his voice, harden not your heart. Walk while you have the light, lest the darkness overtake you. That light is the Catholic faith. There's our Lord Jesus Christ. We've got to run to him. Listen to St. Ignatius of Loyola. Let us, let, the, let us fancy, or let us pretend, that we see hell. And imagine what is worst to behold. A horrible cavern full of black flames. Sulfur, which smells like rotten eggs. Devils. Beasts of hell. Fire. Swords. Arrows. And innumerable damned who roar in despair. Imagine the worst you can imagine. And then say, all this is nothing compared to hell. And it is true. Sister Josepha, for example, our Lord had her descend into hell many times. She said, the worst thing you can imagine in hell is nothing compared to the reality of hell. St. Justin the Martyr, here's what he says. No more is it possible for the evildoer, the avaricious, and the treacherous to hide from God than it is for the virtuous. Every man will receive the eternal punishment or reward which his actions deserve. Indeed, if all men recognize this, no one would choose evil even for a short time, knowing that he would incur the internal, eternal sentence of fire. On the contrary, he would take every means to control himself and to adorn himself in virtue so that he might obtain the good gifts of God and escape the punishments. St. Lidwin of Sikimen, Sikidan, she was uh, paralyzed all her life. St. Lidwina, she was skating as a girl in Holland, and she fell and was paralyzed. She somehow fell on her, on her, back, on her back and her, her tailbone, and she was paralyzed for her life. But being paralyzed, she saw many things of our Lord. She saw heaven, she saw hell. So here's her words. Alas, I could not bear the sight of them. How could I, as the mere noise of these despairing yells of the souls in hell caused me an unbearable horror? It's one thing to hear an be innocent, beautiful baby scream. That's normal. That should fill every house, the joy of hearing babies laugh and scream. That's fine. It's a little stranger to hear insane people howl and scream in despair. It's, it's, it's scary to hear that. Or even worse, a rational man or a rational woman screaming and howling in terrible despair. That's very tough to listen to. But to hear a soul burning in hell, it's unbelievable. And saints have heard it. Saint Catherine, no, Saint, uh, yeah, Saint Catherine of Genoa. She, our Lord showed her a place in hell, which was called the Lion's Pit. And she looked, and it was like lava bubbling up. And there were souls and devils swimming in it being cast around like a huge, like a, like a mother stirring the pot full of vegetables and potatoes, and all the souls just stirring in this lava, and the damned biting at them, tearing them apart. And our Lord asked her to descend into that lion's pit for five years to help save many souls from hell, and she accepted it. She said, the suffering is indescribable. You cannot describe it. Now, many paramedics, many of the fire engine crew, fire station crew, have witnessed, and I've talked to some, 
who have witnessed car crashes where they see a family and children trapped in a car and it's burst of flames everywhere and one man said I couldn't do anything we tried we tried every means to get to them to break the windows and try to get in but we couldn't and the flames moved too quick and it exploded and they saw the whole family screaming and burning alive and die that way now that's tough and I know some paramedics they can only take so much of this and they have to retire early they just can't take seeing people die all the time it's too much for their mind and these are big tough grown men but who could endure it forever everyone everywhere in hell it's a place of insanity but you never go insane it's a place of eternal fire and you never cool off it's a place where you're dying of thirst you never even get a drop it's a place of hate and you cannot love Saint Wolfrand says these words do not neglect the grace that is offered to you now the God who suffers the God who offers the sinner pardon does not promise him tomorrow that's why live today as if it was your last time on earth live every day what Saint Anthony of the desert used to tell his monks live every day like it was going to be your last day you're going to die and be judged so live in the state of grace and live also every day like it was your first day serving God with great love and zeal and, and uh, generosity towards God so dear little flock here in Pocatello, Idaho which is really far near the southern border pray, pray that we save our soul pray for poor sinners Our Lady of Fatima begged the children of Fatima you have seen hell, she said, where poor sinners go and how many go there because many do not pray for them and do not do penance for them and make some reparation for them so this is our this is our greatest work of charity we can do is strive to grow in the love of God but help rescue souls from hell so do our duties of state the best we can that's the best penance fathers be good fathers and good husbands and teach the faith and set the good example and you mothers love your home love what is of the home take care of your husband take care of your children prepare good meals for, like Our Lady did for the Holy Family and keep a cheerful spirit and never if you uh, clash horns husband and wife be quick to forgive forgive one another don't let the Sun go down on your anger and children obey and love your parents don't be sneaky don't steal be honest and love purity and be pure and uh, always remember we always are in the happy presence of God whether you're alone whether you're in, in crowds we're always in his presence to love the purity and girls to love modesty you have to reject the fashions of today they offend God very much and lead souls to hell the, the immodest dress the immodest, the immodest lack of dress <laughs> the immodest clothing and these things you must reject we're children of God love the, to dress with modesty and beauty and pray for your priests these are the devil especially attacks priests pray for us pray for our seminary in Our Lady Mount Carmel in Kentucky we have 15 seminarians studying there and pray for us as well pray that God provides a truly good Catholic Bishop that will preach the faith in the line of Archbishop Lefebvre and ordain our, our boys if God wills and, and restart the confirmations it, with bishops who don't play with the new mass in Vatican II and it's really sad to see the bishops of Archbishop Lefebvre becoming like jellyfish on these points why? so pray, pray for them and then of course 
pray for the Pope. Pray for the Pope. Pope Francis, as big of a headache as he is and a scandal, he is our Holy Father, and we got to pray for him. Because he's taking many souls to, to hell with him right now. He really is. But our prayers can win his conversion, and who knows, become, turn around and consecrate Russia, and everything will turn around when that happens. Our Lady's victory will be issued in. But if it's not Pope Francis, pray that Our Lady gives us a good Pope who will finally obey her. So carry on and fight on, little flock. Fight for heaven. And think often of those four last things. I'm going to die. I'm going to be judged right after my death. I'm going to be judged at the general judgment. So live every word, every thought, every action for the love of God. And I must gain heaven and I must escape the fires of hell. None of us could endure it. None of us. So let's pray often that beautiful prayer Our Lady taught us at the Rosary. Oh my Jesus, forgive us our sins. Save us from the fires of hell. Lead all souls to heaven, especially those, that's us, most in need of thy mercy. O Mary conceived without sin, O Mary conceived without sin, O Mary conceived without sin, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, Amen.